Hello, my name is Sean Julian, and today I will be giving you a presentation on six types of car suspension you may see on the road or in Indiana, as well as one finished suspension chassis to give you an idea of how they work in a real car. The platform on which I am giving you this demonstration on is on a video game called Build and Destroy, which is hosted on a website called Roblox. Roblox is a website for all ages, which hosts a variety of games made by none other than the players themselves. Thanks to the limitless possibilities of making a Roblox game, you have the ability to create any kind of game you can imagine. The game that I am hosting on here, like I said, is called Build and Destroy. In this game, you are given tools to build things like robots, cars, buildings, artillery, or whatever else you can come up with. The first example of suspension that I am presenting is called Tatra Suspension, or Single Link Suspension. This was one of the earliest types of suspension used on cars, and it consists of one wheel attached to an arm, which is attached to the car chassis by one hinge, and then is pushed down from the chassis by one spring. The main disadvantage of this, although it is an independent suspension, which can move in up and down on its own without pushing or affecting other wheels on the car, the main disadvantage is that the wheel angle changes with the angle of the arm. The next type of suspension that I'm presenting is the same as Tatra suspension. However, the arm, the suspension arm, has been stretched to the other side of the chassis. This way, the angle of the arm is more linear and creates less wheel angle when the wheel moves up and down with the spring. The next type of suspension that I am presenting is called solid axle suspension. This type of suspension is commonly found on trucks. Unlike the other examples, this suspension type is, called, is an example of dependent suspension because the other wheel on the other side of the axle is dependent on the wheel that we see here being moved up and down. This type of suspension is called double wishbone suspension. It's similar to the Tatra suspension, however, there are two arms instead of one suspension arm. This makes a parallelogram shape in the suspension action and helps the wheel stay from changing its angle. The wheel is always parallel to the car. On the left, we have normal double wishbone suspension that you see in most cars every day. On the right, we have pushrod suspension, where instead of the spring being attached to the action and then to the chassis, we have a rod that connects the suspension arm to a rocker, which then pushes on the spring. It is the same action, but putting the spring elsewhere. Pushrod suspension is harder to make and generally leaves less engine space in a car. So more often than not, you will see it in race cars like Formula or Indy cars rather than civilian cars. The last type of suspension that I'm going to present is called MacPherson strut suspension. Instead of having two wishbones, the suspension has a spring attached where the upper wishbone would be attached. This allows for more space in the engine compartment. Now I will present to you some of the ex suspension examples that I have given you in a completed car. Thanks to the double wishbone suspension on the front and the solid axle suspension on the rear, this truck is easily able to clear the bumpy terrain. 